Um, depends on what you mean by use them. I mean, really, the, the achievement points are intended to be like a high score mechanic, and really that's all they're meant to be. Uh, we don't have plans for people to translate them into character power or anything like that somehow, because that would cause a lot of really icky behavior if everybody felt like they had to go out and get every achievement, because if they didn't, they wouldn't be whatever. It's really just meant to be a, a pride and fun sort of thing. Yeah, that was the reason behind adding that into the the new guild UI, which is kind of like, so you could look in the guild, kind of like a pride thing, like Tom was saying, just to see who has the most within the guild. Alright, thanks guys. Thank That's you. a cool idea too, I like the beer camp totem idea. Can we use that? Can I have that, please? Hello. Uh, first, a shout out to the Earth and Ring roleplay community. Um, my question is, well, there's a lot of great mounts coming out with Cataclysm. I was wondering about multi person mounts, particularly uh, profession crafted ones, and if there are some coming out, I think engineering should get a minivan. Just... Have you heard about the new alchemy mount? Yes! Yes! Oh my god! That one's going to be hard to get. It'll be fun to see who gets it first. But it's awesome. But it's awesome. Who doesn't want to mount their friend? I mean... Can I say that? Thanks. How you guys doing? First of all, I'm glad to hear you guys confirming the, uh, the new Legendary, but my question is, will the Legendary be available in both 10 and 25? And also, will it scale, will it scale similar to the way Valonir did, to where it lasted upwards to two contents higher and was still viable? Um, I, I think that we, at this stage, we'd probably want the Legendary to be available for both 10, 10 and 25. I mean, there's... Um, as far as, you know, how, how far it scales, that's really hard to say. I, I mean, we do like it when Legendaries stick around longer than normal items. I mean, they definitely should do that. Uh, but it's always tricky to, to balance exactly how far out it goes. It sort of depends on where in the expansion cycle we are relative to when the next uh, expansion will come out, that sort of thing. Thanks. Uh, this is Zecolian from uh, Arthas. And uh, basically, whoop, uh, <laughs> basically, uh, I originally liked the idea that you guys had of lowering the talents, but now I've kind of noticed I really hate the fact that there's no uniqueness anymore. There's, everybody's going to be the exact same number of specs or number of talents for marksmanship, for, for marksmanship hunters, and they're going to put the same amount into survival. There, there's not going to be any difference. There's no uniqueness. So I was wondering if you were ever planning on going back to extending it and giving us more options, and it, it's just kind of become more noob friendly. I was wondering if you guys were going to do that. Damn noobs. Do you think the, uh, the older, deeper talent trees, people actually have specs that are that different from each other? They didn't. <laughs> we know. We looked. <clears throat> now, like I said, it, it, it's a new design. It's an ongoing thing. We want to make sure there are choices to where you can go deeper, you can go sideways. Those last 10 points you get to spend are some of the most exciting ones in the tree because you decide you're going to you know, put a ball in one tree, you're going to put five here, five here. Um, We'll get there, we'll see what the kind of specs develop, and hopefully we can tweak things to where there's not the obvious choices. There were definitely cookie cutter specs before this change, and, and there are likely to be some specs that end up being a little bit too cookie cutter after, and we'll just have to fix those specs individually. Well, I was just thinking, because like some mages used to run with a, like Frostfire, like half would go into fire and half would go into frost, and you know, that was something that was fun for players. So I'm just saying, like, um, uh, we can't stop halfway and then go into the next tree. It's we have to go all the way down and into the next. So. Yeah, I mean, there's some inaccuracy there. Nobody really went half fire and half frost. They pretty much always went mostly fire and then, a, you know, some frost. Uh, otherwise, you were kind of gimping yourself a little bit. Um, so, yeah, we did take away some ways for people to gimp themselves. <laughs> Thanks. What's up? I'm Squeak from Destromass. Shout out to my friends in the guild. Nah, I'm straight bra and I'm full of chocolate. Anyway, down to serious business. 
I'm wondering, right now, Rhett Paladins and Arms Warriors, they used to have the talent to reduce duration of disarms. They don't anymore. So they're kind of stuck getting a weapon chain for PvP. And I'm wondering if that's intended and if maybe because rogues can have offhand weapon chain and then berserking or whatever in their main hand and they get that nice buff every once in a while, but warriors and rep paladins don't. Are you just, is that just what you want or are they going to have a little more damage so that it's kind of even or what's the plan for that? So one of the things we did in the talent tree overhauls is we got rid of a lot of the kind of anti-crowd control measures. We felt, I, I say this a lot, we felt we were in an arms race where, okay, I have a disarm, and then he has something that makes a disarm worse, and then the new talent gives you an even better disarm that doesn't apply to that, like, anti-disarm, disarm thing, and it, it just keeps getting out of control. And we thought, let's just go back to, when you crowd control someone, most of the time it works, and we have diminishing returns for PvP, and balance it around that, and make sure people can't die within one, one crowd control. You shouldn't be, you know, you're not going to lose the match because you were disarmed for a short period of time. Hi. Uh, do you intend to make anything besides heirlooms, account bounds, such as titles, mounts, or achievements? Um, certainly, wherever it's appropriate, we do like doing that. Um, I mean, account bound items are, are really cool for sure, because we know people level up a lot of alts. Um, we, we do have to, you know, things that are not character power oriented are definitely a higher chance of having that done, because, you know, obviously, not going to break somebody's leveling experience if we give you like a an account bound mount or something like that. Um, so it, it is something that we'd like to do. It's just a question of when and where. Many of the uh, archaeology items are actually they're not heirlooms, but they're account bound. So you can trade them around to your different characters. The same thing with the new guild mount. The guild mount is account bound as well from the new guild leveling system. I would like to ask for a closet. Something similar to a keychain. We've got all these wonderful festival items and Midsummer Night and all that stuff, and no place to put them. Yeah, that is actually something that we had hoped to get in with Cataclysm. Um, it's really more of a question of resolving data storage and exactly what the interface is and all that kind of stuff. But it is something that we'd like to do at some point. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What I'm interested in is that how excited you guys are to play World of Dresscraft. <laughs> it's awesome. Well, I have kind of a, uh, a lore request. Um, the Horde currently has two very shoutable, very good battle cries. And I'm wondering when the Horde shouts for the Horde, what do I say? I'm wondering if you can give some character somewhere some good thing to shout back. Have mercy. You know, we've experimented with uh, a, a, a slew of, of battle cries, and um, nothing has ever quite matched up with For the Horde. It's, it's hard. Um, but when we find it, you'll know. <laughs> we'll keep trying. Yeah, we're going to keep trying. We're not giving up. That, that's, that's not the battle cry. We'll keep trying. That'd be good. <laughs> I'm uh, from Legions on Lightbringer US 38, and my question is in regards to mastery. Uh, you stated that you wanted mastery to dynamically change up your gameplay, and how does, say, a warlock or mage mastery, which is just a flat damage bonus, change up or affect their gameplay? It's not so much that we want you to dramatically change your rotations, it's that Crit has a very clear purpose. Crit makes you hit harder, makes you heal harder, so it's throughput. Um, and sometimes in case of healers, we mana savings too. And then haste lets you do more things, so if you're a caster, you're casting faster. If you're melee, you're getting more resources. So then mastery then makes you better at what you do. 
So if you're a disciplined priest, it makes you better at shielding. If you're a warlock, it makes you better at, at shadow or fire damage. If you're a mage, arcane, frost or fire damage. So the, the hope is that there isn't one right answer that you can... You, you might want crit for some builds and haste for other builds. You want a little bit of everything. We're not necessarily trying um, to totally change up your rotations with mastery, but particularly for mages, um, haste does a pretty good job of that too already. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. I'm Elena from IronGaming.com, and I'm currently working on the Insane in the Main Brain achievement. Now, with all the changes to Dire Mall North, will I still be able to achieve this ch achievement in the Cataclysm? <laughs> the insanity? I'm, so, I'm sorry, I heard, it was hard hearing the question. The insanity? Well, Currently, the Insane of the Membrane Achievement oh, right. affects oh. some of the factions that are located within Dire Mall North. Currently, you can't turn in any of the quests, or the Librams aren't dropping in beta. So I was wondering if you guys are planning on keeping it around and or changing the requirements for the achievement. The biggest problem is the changes to the uh, Blood Sail Buccaneers and Cataclysm. That kind of put a bullet in the head of that feat of strength for now. It's fun to do very painful things in World of Warcraft. <laughs> if there's a huge outcry for it, we'll try to put something equally brutal in the game. Hi. With the existence of Pandarans being hinted at here and there through quest lines, is the Cataclysm shaking up the world as it is going to bring it, them into the light anymore? Are they still going to be secluded away? I'm not asking for them as a playable race, but maybe as a neutral race we'll see. Uh, I don't see them flying out of the cracks in the earth, if that's what you're saying. <laughs> But we'll, we'll see. I mean, uh, the Pandaren are a super cool race, uh, awesome concept, and, you know, maybe it's something that we'll be able to see more of in the future. I just meant, like, their, their home is on some secluded island. Is maybe, like, you know, the goblins, their island was destroyed. Maybe the Pandarens suffered a similar fate, or sending them out, some of their members out into the world. We'll have to see. We'll see. Engineers represent. As an engineer, I like that minivan uh, idea earlier, but your other profession would have to be herbalism. Um, <laughs> but my real question was in terms of uh, voice acting. Um, I noticed that um, I, I missed Metzen's not on the panel. I was wondering why um, it's easy to really like voice acting because like every new major character sounds like Thrall. Um, I was wondering if you guys would be willing to open up auditions, because I think a lot of your players would like to put their voices in the game somehow, someplace. Definitely awesome. is actually not Metzen. Oh, it so sounds like Thrall. I'm going to be like, Varian's Thrall, and the first guy in Forge of Souls is Thrall. That he is. That he is. Um, we, we, we have a process, believe it or not. Um, and... Uh, we adhere to that process. We have a lot of very talented actors and actresses, not just Chris, although he has a lovely voice. Great. Um, and, uh, and so, yeah, we'll, we'll keep doing VO. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's great. I wanted to preserve the authenticity of Thrall's voice. I just want to say that maybe for like a few extra characters on the side, maybe a contest every once in a while, you know? That could be cool. Never know. All right, thank you. Thanks. Uh, actually, did we use Metzen's voice for any Voice in Cataclysm? I don't think we did. Uh, Metzen's back for a few. Okay. A few dozen. <laughs> Hi, I'm Anastasia and I'm an altaholic. I am desperate for another character slot. I've got 10 characters, they're gonna be 80 by the time Cataclysm comes out. Give us some more room, please. Do you need 12 of them for your 12 step program? That's what I need, yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, I can offer you another 10 slots for 15 bucks a month. <laughs> our, our servers are home. Don't want to lose it, our home. It is something that we've talked about. Um, it's just, you know, right now, it's, it's 
it's not looking like something that we're going to do. Uh, I, that doesn't mean that we ne would never do it in the future, but we'll have to wait and see. Thank you. Thank you.